Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my Doctor Who Series 4 ranking. Wow, Series 4 or Season 30, 30 seasons, wow, we have, we have reviewed 30 seasons of Doctor Who and there's still 8 more to go until we get to the present day. Not to mention the specials that followed from this one. Um, so yeah, but 30 30 seasons that is a lot <laughs> and what's better way to celebrate the 45th anniversary of the show than with possibly the best series of the entire show series four or season 30 this is now as i mentioned at the end of my stolen earth journey the end review this is now my favorite series and the best the best series of doctor who overall um it used to be series one it was topped by Series 3, and now Series 4, and um, Honourable Classic Series mentions will go to series Seasons 7, 13, 25, and 26, with 25 being my personal favourite, but 13 being the mathematical best. However, in terms of a personal favourite, Series 3 topped all of those, along also Series 1, and on a mathematical count, Series 4 has topped everything. Um, and there's a very good reason why this one's my personal favourite, um, but I'll get to that in a moment. But the stories we will be rank ranking in this series are Voyage of the Damned, Partners in Crime, The Fires of Pompeii, Planet of the Ude, The Sontaran Stratagem and The Poison Sky, The Doctor's Daughter, The Unicorn and the Wasp, Science in the Library and Forest of the Dead, Midnight, Turn Left and The Stolen Earth and Journey's End, aka Doctor Who's version of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Before we get into this ranking, I forgot to do the honourable mention uh, for Time Crash, so I'll quickly do that before we jump into the ranking. So the honourable mention spot in this ranking goes to Time Crash. Yeah, um, again, like with Born Again and Attack of the Grask and the Infinite Quest, it's more of a bones review, it doesn't really count as Series 4, um, so I just... Um, just throwing it in as a honourable mention. Um, so, um, there you go. Back to me to continue with this ranking. So, yeah, um, and I'd just like to get one thing out of the way. Every story in this series from my number nine position onwards is either a nine or ten out of ten story. There's only two that aren't nine or tens, and they're actually not even eight out of tens. One's a six and one's a seven. But despite um, that... This series is filled with 9 and 10 out of 10 stories, in my opinion, for about 9 out of 11 in, uh, stories. Um, and even one of the ones that didn't was originally a 9. Uh, one of the ones that's gone down. So, yeah, this this series is um, just, just filled with amazing episodes, uh, including the most number of 10 out of 10 stories in any season. Six, including the Christmas special. Um... So, yeah, this, this series has the most number of 10 out of 10 stories in any series. And it's got the most number of, ex of brilliant stories in any series. It's um, out of 8, 9 or 10 out of 10 stories. It's got the most with pretty much 9 out of 11. Um, as season 17, as I've explained to some people, is my least favourite because that one's got more meh to bad episodes in that season then met a good that one's only got one 10 out of 10 story and also a 9 out of 10 if you count Sharda and then the rest I've got one six one five and two fours so it's heading more down to uh going backwards from mare towards bad in this series however there's only one mare one good and nine fantastic two outstanding so without further ado um let's get down into the ranking to see which story is meh which story is good and which stories are fantastic or outstanding starting off with number 11 okay um despite my positivity for this series despite my love this episode is the one disappointment of this um series in comparison to in terms of quality at least um story quality um this one's, I just didn't actually know what to do with it. I didn't actually have much of an idea, um, whether I, how much I, I did enjoy it, but I wasn't incredibly certain. I feel like it's good, but I think it could have been a lot better, had a lot better at least, and it was alright, I guess, but I'm not gonna 
call it one of the best episodes of all time, like I will with most of the episodes coming up later on the list, or at least one of the best episodes of the era, and that is The Doctor's Daughter. Yeah, I just thought this one was okay. I thought this one had some good moments, had some not so good moments. Um, it was meh for me. Um, it got a six out of ten. More for um, I think it could have gone to a five if it wasn't for the production quality because this series is a really great pr um production quality. I think all of the new series ones are great in the production standard. Um. But I think story-wise, this one wasn't so great. Character-wise, I think we should have a bit more Martha if she was even going to be in here at all. Otherwise, um, what was the point? Jenny, um, I think there should have been a bit more of an emotional attachment between her and the Doctor to even make her, um, to even make us care about her. She wasn't so much like the Doctor here, although in the big finish audience she's in. Certainly in uh, the Legacy of Time episode she's in, she is very much like the Tenth Doctor. So they they actually go more Tenth Doctor roots down with her character, whilst here they don't do it at all. They're just a generic kid character here, whilst in the Legacy of, Legacy of Time episode she's in, um, which happens to be my least favourite episode of that box set. Um, she was very much very Tenth Doctor-esque um, there. So whilst I thought she could have been a bit more like the Doctor here, perhaps just a little, just to show that she is his daughter, Big Finish actually, certainly with the Legacy of Time at least, they actually go... Um, all the way with that, um, to a point where actually now it's a bad idea. Maybe like, maybe the Jenny Audio series is a bit better, perhaps. Uh, maybe they do her a bit better, I'm not quite sure. But apparently um, in Mr. Tardis' review, latest, uh, recent review of episode one, she's very much like how she is in this story. So, yeah, I I think we it's going to be a double-edged sword for this if we're going to do this, take this character any further than her appearances so far, in both on screen and in the audio, in any comic or books she's appeared in. It's a bit of a double-edged sword with, in terms of character. That being said, I do love Georgia Moffat in the role. She's really great. Um, or Georgia, Georgia Tennant now, I should say. Um, she's really, really great. And also Catherine Tate is also really great as Donna. I hate John, General Cobb, though. I really hate General Cobb. And I don't know if that was supposed to be the point or not. Possibly, but I still, still can't stand him. He's probably the most notable new series character at this point that I would consider those characters. Mostly classic series ones, but it's also a couple of new series ones where they're just characters I just can't stand for some reason. Um, whether I've got a reason or not, I just can't freaking stand them. It started, uh, it's my most notable one is Chancellor Autumn from the Monster of Peladon, but there are plenty of characters throughout the classic and even a few in the new series that I just can't freaking stand. <sighs> they're usually idiot characters anyway. Okay, moving on to more positive things. Number 10. Now, this story I used to really, really, really love. I mean, not to a 10 out of 10 standard. It, this was a 9 out of 10. But after rewatching the episode, it sort of cheats with what it wants to do. It cheats with what it needs to do. And ultimately, I think it should have been a little bit longer so we could actually get a bit more stuff done. As I kind of mentioned several times in the review, I apologise for going on and on about it then. Um, but I feel like the Unicorn and the Wasp could have done a few more things before we actually came to the conclusion so number 10 is the unicorn and the wasp now this story is one i really enjoyed this is a fun enjoyable story but unfortunately when it comes to that big reveal who the murderer stuff is because this is a agatha christie murder mystery home homage with agatha christie as a historical guest character a um, bit like how the Shakespeare Code was playing homage to Shakespeare characters, uh, Shakespeare plays and characters. But as I mentioned a few times in my review, the story does miss out a couple of cl uh, clues that the Doctor and Agatha work out. And we don't get enough scenes with them working the clues that they do have out so that they come to their final conclusions We have when we have the big um, reveal scene. Uh, when they're going through every, every single character, revealing the secrets and finding who the murderer is, it... Could have been handled a little bit better. Perhaps if they didn't focus on the Doctor being poisoned for three minutes, then maybe it was two or three minutes, then maybe we could have a bit more time to actually solve some clues. And the deleted scenes from the episode don't help any any much better. So, yeah, not, not really much helpful, to be honest. Um, but that means that it's still a really fun, enjoyable, historical murder mystery adventure with a great historical character, some great performances, and the Wasp is also a uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool alien. Uh, I like the Wasp. 
Not sure if, it, if the murderer needed to be a, a giant an alien, a giant wasp or otherwise, but it's pretty cool how they work it in with the story. Okay, moving on to number nine. Now we're into the territory of great stories. Every story from this uh, one onwards is fantastic or, or above. Um, we start with the fires of Pompeii. Um, I just thought this was a really great historical um, set adventure with some great um, sci-fi elements and a great um, emotional decision um, for the Doctor and Donna to face as they have to decide whether to let Pompeii be destroyed or the Pyroviles take over Earth. It's a really great dilemma story with some great supporting characters, even if the dialogue's a little generic for some of them. But that being said, it's still really well done and looks absolutely magnificent and really really brilliant moving on to number eight number eight is a really fun really enjoyable and really entertaining first story of the series it's not the best first story of the season that would still go to series three um so far of the new of the new series um but it's still a really fun and enjoyable one and it is of course partners in crime Yeah, I just really enjoyed this story. I thought it was really entertaining. It was a bit more of a comedic episode, especially as this episode basically followed Voyage of the Damned, which was anything but comedic. Well, it had some comedic moments. It was had some lighthearted moments, but it was mostly a dra uh, dramatic um, disaster story. And that, more or less, followed uh, directly on from the events of Utopia, The Sound of Drums, and The Last of the Time Lords. Or, as I mentioned in that review uh, for uh, Voyage of the Damned, all of these events just shoved together um so much happened in those four episodes five if you count time crash um so the doctor pretty much couldn't catch a break from the start of utopia to the end of voyage of the damned it just kept going and going um thankfully we now have a bit more of a uh more humorous and light-hearted episode after the very dramatic um stories that came before it and allows a bit more levity and also a great way to reintroduce Donna back into the series. And she's even better here than she was in Runaway Bride, Runaway Bride and will continue to be so. Just an, a brilliant story. And also Sarah Lancashire is a great uh, guest character in the Adipose. They're a nice, cute um, alien race. It's a nice subversion to the typical aliens, along with the Pating from Series 11. It's a nice subversion to what you'd normally expect aliens to be. You know, like, so... That's pretty cool. Um, moving on to number seven. Number seven is the best depiction of the Sontarans. Although the Sioux Doctors is my favourite uh, favorite Sontaran story, they're not really the main villains there. Um, so this is my favourite Sontaran story where they're the main villains. And this is, this is, of course, the Sontaran Stratagem and the Poison Sky. Yeah, this one was just absolutely amazing. I mean, not quite enough to get 10 out of 10, but it was still absolutely amazing. A great story for the Sontarans, and even introduced a few more elements to them that hadn't been introduced before, uh, hadn't been seen before in the classic series. Just added a few more stuff to them, and it did it in such a great way. Units back in full force for the first time since Battlefield, although they have had appearances in previous episodes in the new series, in the new series, but this is the first time they've come in full force since Battlefield. And they've had, their, they, I think they've had a name change from the United Nations Intelligence Task Force to the United Intelligence Task Force, which probably helps to expand it outside of the UN countries, as well as also due to the fact that the Master was around last series, they had to have a bit of an upgrade. Um, but yeah, units are in top form here. Martha's back, even though she gets um, sidelines for parts of the episode so that her clone can take over. But that's for plot purposes. It's not as bad as Doctor's Daughter. And we've got some great stuff for Donna to do. And it's just an outright great episode and really, really enjoyable. And so, so ruddy brilliant. And I love the Sontarans themselves here. General Style, Commander Score, they're just they're two of the best Sontarans we've had so far. And... Oh, no, well, scratch that. They're two of the best Sontarans of all time. And the Sontarans here get great personalities, especially those two. Um, well, specifically those two, actually. But still, really, really great and really enjoyable. And just magnificent stuff. Whew. Well, that was the bottom five stories. The top six, however, are now all 10 out of 10 stories. Woohoo! <laughs> 
This is this is it. This is it. We're moving into ten out of ten territory. So, the last three were nines, and now we're into the tens. And we start off with the 2007 Christmas special, Voyage of the Damned, at number six. This isn't the best Christmas special. I still give that to the Christmas Invasion, but I do think this is a very fun one, really enjoyable. A great disaster epic adventure with the Doctor, a great guest companion, Astrid Peth, played by Kanye Minogue, who does brilliantly. We also have Clive Swift return. He's great. We got my favourite Jimmy V character in this story, Banafla de Lata. <sighs> um, Wilfred Mott makes his first appearance, which is always great. Um, who else is a returning actor for this? Jeffrey Palmer, who plays the captain. He's brilliant. Um, Midshipman Frame makes his first appearance, and uh, Russell Tovey's great, and even Rickson Slade's a pretty good character, even though he's a one-dimensional prick, um, but he's still a likeable character, I, well, not quite likeable, but he's still a character I wanted to see get through this, despite not being one I would have wanted to have survived, if given the choice, and we've also got support, um, supporting characters of M for, um, Morvin and Foon, um, Van Hoff, um, they're great, they're really um, great supporting characters. I do find uh, Morvin's death to be un uh, it was unnecessary when it happened, how it happened. If he died another way, I think it would have been better. But how it was, it was it was unnecessary. It was unfair on him. But nevertheless, I thought this story was really great and really entertaining, and a great twist with who the villain was. Uh, actually, to be honest, I think when I first saw this, I thought this story was going to have Davros in this one when I, I heard about Davros. Um, but don't worry, Davros does turn up later in this series. We're going to get to that in a moment. But Voyage of the Damned, just a brilliant for a rise of an adventure. It's not the best Christmas special, but it's darn right up there. Um, as one of my personal favourites. Okay, number five. Number five is my second favourite Russell T. Davis era series finale after Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways. And an outright epic adventure and amazing, brilliant story. This is so, so ruddy brilliant. The Stolen Earth and Journey's End. The Stolen Earth is outstanding setup, bringing together characters from, from across the Hooniverse together to face the Daleks and Davros in an epic adventure. We've got Martha, Jack, Torchwood members, Gwen and Dianto, Sarah Jane Smith, her adopted son Luke, Mr. Smith, their computer, and also we've got Rose back as well. So this story is pretty much full of characters, and that's not even including um, Wilf, Sylvia, um, Harriet Jones and Francine Jones, and also Mickey's and Jackie return in the last in the last episode, as well as the Doctor, Donna, Davros, and the Daleks, including the Supreme Dalek and Dalek Khan. This episode is packed with characters, and it's just an absolute loop thrill ride from start to finish. It is so great. Journey's End does buckle under its own uh, weight towards the, at, in the climax, and that's why that's here. Otherwise, it would have been top three territory. Um, However, it's still an outstanding story that, wor that was worthy enough to give it a 10 out of 10 score and fifth place on this list. And it's just an amazing adventure, a brilliant way to end the series. Also, shout out to Jack McCulloch, aka Jack the Fan Fanatic, as this is his favourite new series story. And good, good choice. Um, Ollie Pajax, uh, aka Mr. Tardis Eleven, said that this was his favourite story after changing it from the end of time. But according to Jack, that's now Utopia: The Sound of Drums, Last of the Time Lords. Hmm. But this was at one point Ollie's favourite new um, story of all time as well. For a bit before he changed that to the series three finale. Okay, moving on to number four. Uh, number four, you might actually be surprised. This one's, um, despite being a ten out of ten, this one's higher than Stolen Earth Journey's End. But uh, like I said, if Journey's End hadn't buckled under its weight, it would have been top three. Um, but this one, I think, this one is a really great story, really enjoyable. And like the Sontarans, it gives the monsters of these of this story a bit more background, a bit more to the characters, um, the, or the, the species as characters. And it does it really, really well. Planet of the Ood. Yeah, um, this is a this is a really great, really, really great story. It's pretty political, so yes, there is politi politics in Doctor Who before 2017, and yes, it was very noticeable before um, Series 10, 11. So why are we still arguing about it? And yeah, this one's just absolutely amazing. 
Um, the Doctor and Donna having to help the Ood out. Um, the villains, pretty dastardly. The Ood are great characters. So we get more about them. And it's just absolutely, it's, a, it's an absolute brilliant story. An anti-slavery story and just an outright uh, epic adventure. Ooh, and some really cool action stuff as well. Moving on to number three. A lot of people are going to be very happy to see this here. Even if it's not one or two. Uh, number one or two. But uh, I definitely know my friends on the Hooniversals, Matt Moyer, uh, Moyer and Thomas Aiden James, will be happy to see this. And Jean-Luc Harry, they'll all be happy to see this here. My number three choice is Midnight. Up alongside Blink, this is usually considered one of the best episodes of the Tenth Doctor's era, if not the best. Personally, I think it's a great story. I think it's really well done. I mean, so with some, it's got some personal niggles, but that's just me. I think the story is still really great as it is. Some great supporting characters and done some really great acting. They do go a little over the top and a bit too far towards the end, but considering how the story's been building up, it does make sense. Um... But on the whole, this is a really, really great story. Um, definitely worth giving another try if you're not so keen on this. And if you are a fan who considers this a very strong story, if maybe even one of the best. Okay, um, moving on to number two. This one, I think, is slightly better than Midnight. I think it just, I think on a character level, it beats it just by an inch. Turn left. Funny story, these two used to be quite lower on this list, all about, in fact, Time to Turn Left um, was at one point my least favourite, as was Midnight, but these two have shot right back up um, for this, um, for these reviews, after these reviews, by the way, my, uh, by, the, by the way, the Doctor's Daughter had been down at the bottom pre-reviews as, as the placeholder prior to doing them, but Midnight shot all the way to third and it's now Turn Left to second. Um, they're just really great. You, uh, Turn Left's a great um, story that shows what would happen if the Doctor wasn't around. A dystopian world when the Titanic hits Buckingham Palace. A more understated version of that, though, because otherwise the planet would have been toast uh, completely. So we actually got off lightly in this universe. And uh, it's just a really great character piece for Donna Noble, which is really, really brilliant. And also Rose Tyler is at her least annoying in series four, she's uh, well. She's I wouldn't say she's annoying in series four, but there are I can see why some people would not like her. Um, from bringing back some of the same faults we had in series one and two, especially two. But I think out of the three episodes she's in, this would be her least annoying to, to those people. I think, and I think she's really good in all three episodes, especially this one when she's trying to help Donna out, and Billy Piper wants to then brilliant job. So number one, in my opinion, the best story from series four. A epic roller coaster ride of adventure and just absolutely amazing. What could it be? Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead is my number one choice. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a bit typical putting a pre series 5 Stephen Moffat story first, but let's be honest. His pre-Series 5 stuff was amazing, and even post-Series uh, 5 and onwards stuff, we had he had his amazing stories like Heaven Sent, Day of the Doctor, Walk Enough in Time, Doctor Falls, and The Eleventh Hour, of course, which we'll be getting to soon. That's his next script. Woo! Um, but uh, Russell T. Davis, Stephen Moffat, he wrote some amazing stories. Empty Child Doctor Dances, that came third on my Series 1 ranking, and then his Series 2 and 3 scripts. Again, the fireplace and uh, Blink uh, were my favourites of Series 2 and 3, respectively. And once again, we got another one of his scripts as my favourite for Series 4. Um, Science and Library of the Dead is a great, um, scary adventure set at the, at the library with the Doctor and company having to um, save everybody from the Vashta Nirada, another great crea creation by Moffat. Um, we also get introduced to River Song, and it's done really well. I think the character's at her best in this story, and Alex Kingston is amazing. Yeah, some of the setup stuff, like, um, he hasn't met me yet. Spoilers, it's a little bit repetitive, although not as much as sometime in the um, actual Moffat era itself. But I still think it's really well handled and really, really great. And building up a great mystery that will span the first two series of the 11th Doctor's era. And just really well done and i just really enjoyed the story as a whole just really great entertainment really greatly done and really brilliant stuff and also the computer stuff in the library is also great 
Um, also, sort of sneakily hints at what Turn Left would do as well, with um, someone creating a world around Donna Lobel's a, a life that she would have without the Doctor, without having to return to her normal life that she had before. So, yeah, on the whole, Science in the Library, Forest of the Dead, just absolutely loved it. It's fantastic supporting characters with their, a great cast playing them, and some just amazing stuff and some really cool moments and great bits. Woo! So, to wrap this ranking up, um, to recap the list, number 11 is The Doctor's Daughter, number 10 is The Unicorn and the Wasp, number 9 is The Fires of Pompeii, number 8 is Partners in Crime, number 7 is The Sontaran Stratagem and the Poison Sky, number 6 is Voyage of the Damned, number 5 is The Stolen Earth Journey's End, number 4 is Plans of the Ood, number 3 is Midnight, number 2 is Turn Left, and number 1 is Science in the Library and Forest of the Dead. So... That's it from my Doctor Who Series 4 ranking, and as I said at the start, this is now officially my favourite series of Doctor Who, and my and the best series of Doctor Who, Series 4, Season 30, magnificent, fantastic way to celebrate the 45th anniversary year, and yeah, I don't know, what a series for David Tennant to um, end on, or when I say end on, he's not finished just yet, but it's this is technically his last series, so... Yeah, this is te this is a great final series for him. And for me, it has six 10 out of 10 stories and another three 9 out of 10, making a total of nine fantastic to outstanding stories. And even if the two that aren't fantastic or outstanding, I still like, well, certainly with Unicorn and the Wasp, I'm not incredibly certain with Doctor's Daughter. That's the only downside of this series, is that's uh, that series. And I would gladly have one of the series three stories or one of the series one or two stories that are... are I scored six or seven or above in this series instead. Nevertheless, I thought it was all right. I thought it was okay and I enjoyed most of it. So I'm not going to make a big fuss about it. And like I said, Unicorn and Wasp did sort of cheat. But above, apart from that, it was still a really great story and really entertaining and really enjoyable. Um, so I pretty much don't really have any complaints about this series as a whole, really. I mean, Doctor's Daughter was a, wasn't that amazing, but I'll, I'll accept it as it, as it is. Um... So, yeah, this series is pretty much um, not quite perfect, but then again, <laughs> even the best stuff's not perfect. Um, you can have some perfect elements, but um, even the best stuff isn't perfect. Um, so, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching this ranking. Thank you so much for watching these reviews. Hope you enjoyed them. And that's it from Doctor Who Series 4, Season 30. But we're not quite done with the 10th Doctor's era just yet, as he's still got five more episodes, four more stories, plus also Dreamland to go. As next time, we'll be starting the 2008 to 10 specials, as seen in this, uh, included in this box set. Um, Dreamland I'll have the individual DVD for. And we'll be continuing the reviews with the next Doctor. And then after the specials, um, once we're done with the specials, reviews and ranking, I'll have the top 10 10th Doctor stories um, ranking, and then following that is the top 10 mid to late 2000s ranking. So the top 10 10th Doctor stories ranking is my favourite stories from the 10th Doctor era, and then the mid to late 2000s one includes series 1 as well, so you'll have some 9th Doctor uh, stories thrown in there as well, um, so they're not too samey. Once we've passed the David Tennant era, and once we're into the year 2010, we'll, we will then be on to the series 5 reviews. Woo! This is another great series. I'm looking forward to series five. Definitely Moffat's best series. So all that's left for me to say is thank you again for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Nicholas Payne Retro YouTube channel. Um, we're 23, uh, sorry, 7. However, Series 3 um, topped them both um, on those um, count. Voyage of the Damned, Science in the Library and Forest of the Dead. And which story... And that is, um, so, so, so they actually went a bit too far. Um, but here, uh, what we, something that goes wrong. However, here, the story does kind of jump to the work, finding out. But the story, 
this, um, <laughs> it was a bit more of a comedic episode, especially as this episode, in an even better fashion than how she... <sighs> Number seven is my favourite Sontarans, um, not to the United Nations. Great supporting guest compare. Great compare. Um, Jimmy V plays his, my favourite, my favourite. Um, um, but it was number five. Um, number five is a great, number five is the best Doctor Who series. Characters from Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures with Martha as well. But ultimately, it's still a magnificent story. And that's, a, shout out to Jack McCulloch for this being his, um, favourite new series story. Um, so... Also, a shout out to Jack McCullough, KK Jack, the film fanatic, as this is his, as this is his new. Also, shout out to Jack McCullough, KK Jack, uh, Jack the fan, if that's in, if that is indeed what he has done. And it does it in a really, really well, um, really uh, done. And no, it wasn't as no. Um. So moving. But that, if I was to complain about those, that, but if you remo removed those, and if you are a massive fan of it, well, here it is on this rank. And if you are a massive rank, and if you are a massive, um, but these two have shot up all the way to second, uh, third, and now second, a great dystopian f um, uh, world. A bit. A... So, number one. So, number one, the best episode of series four, and so in my, and once again, we, uh, he's, his, and it's just really great. Yeah, some of the setup does get a little bit annoying when, when it's a bit repetitive. That isn't quite no, a normal life just yet. Fantastic supporting characters and act, um, um, yeah, and look at it, see, and for me, it has six, ten out of ten episodes, followed by, Making a total of nine out of eleven stories, fantastic. Making a total of nine outstanding. Making a total of nine to fantastic. Um, but nevertheless, I still enjoyed it. I still felt it was all right. Um, so I'm okay with it. Which um, basically my favourite episodes of the first four series is up to the up to the end of uh, from roast at the end of time. So basically, um, and then after that. And then after those rankings, we'll be then on to the... And then after those rankings are done, we'll be on to the Series 5 reviews. And then after those... And then after those rankings are done, after we're completely done with the David Tennant era, once we've passed the year... Two, and once we're into the year two. Um, so yeah, all, all that's left for me to say is thank you... What, so that... So all that's left for me to say is thank you for... So all that's left for me to say is thank you again for watching and I'll see... So all that's left for me to say is thank you once again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. So got all that. Hey everyone, uh, Nick. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> my honourable mention for Series 4 goes to Time Crash.